Hello, everybody. Adam Parks here with another episode of Receivables Roundtable. Today, I am here with my good friend, Lauren, with Sam's, who has been an industry staple for many years. And Lauren, for those of you that are not lucky enough to have gotten to know you through the years like I have, could you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you got to the seat that you're in today? Sure. So um, several years ago now, I started with a company in New York, um, and I was in their billing department, managing their collections. And for I stayed there for about 15 years. And over that 15 years, I started managing collections and uh, customer care and debt sales. Mm -hmm. um, along the way, my business partner, Brenda Melly, who was with uh, Sam, the company I'm at now, um, was a consultant for me. And she mm -hmm. would help me um, find best fits and do different things. And so uh, from there, after I left it after about 15 years, uh, I started to work with Brenda. Mm -hmm. And so I went and started to work at Solutions for Account Management, better known as Sam. Um, and Sam is uh, one of the uh, RMAI uh, certified debt sell brokers in the industry. So I'll tell you that Sam started out as a matchmaking service. It was really supposed to be like a business concierge for the arm industry. Mm -hmm. And we would find best fit agencies and, you know, debt buyers, law firms, you name it for our clients. And about nine years ago, when I started working with Brenda, uh, we really grew out a debt sale, mm -hmm. uh, uh, debt sale uh, management strategy. And so I would say now over 85, 90% of what we do is marketing debt sale portfolios on behalf of our clients. Wow. So you guys have really kind of morphed from that, um, connecting the creditor to the agency and the law firm and all the different vendors that they may need to really hyper focused on kind of the debt sales portion of it. So would you say that the, the pieces that you're doing now that are outside of debt sales are mostly just to support those debt sales clients and provide them with other services that they kind of just need? Yeah, yeah, I would say it's helping debt buyers find agencies to work the paper they're buying. Um, it's, you know, sometimes helping our creditors, maybe they want to have a hybrid. So they want to sell certain paper and they want to place certain papers. So we'll help them. Mm -hmm. uh, really, you know, our, our whole business model was built around relationships. And so we want to help our client and find best fits for everything we do. Um, I, I'll say when I started about nine years ago, there was a huge need for selling debt. And mm -hmm. there are a lot of our creditors, you know, obviously some creditors have been selling for years and years and some always thought it was like a no, no. And it was really trying to help change the perception of that, that, you know, it's just like placing debt with an agency and you get the steady in, inflow of cash and, you know, different things. And so over the last nine years, our, our process has grown. Our team has grown. I mean, we've just we've gone from two people to 11. Um, you know, we you know, we've now built a, our own platform to mimic our process. And so, you know, that took years and, and cultivating client relationships and growing to give them the things that they needed to successfully uh, close a deal. Oh, well, that's a that's an interesting kind of growth trajectory, which kind of leads me to my line of questioning today, because you've got your finger on the pulse of the marketplace. I hear a lot about transition and change in 2023. I think part of that is people um, adjusting back to normal business circumstances after 2022. And I think part of that is in preparation of 2024 and the projected changes in volumes based on the current economic environment. What are you seeing out there? What's what's going on in the market? The market's pretty volatile. I will tell you that um, it's changed a lot since uh, last year. So in the last twelve months, it has done like almost like a three hundred and sixty. It is mm. like like it is where it was a, um, a seller's market last year. It's a buyer's market now. Mm. Um, so you know we're seeing a lot more volume in the industry. Um, we're seeing like. Also, just what I'm kind of calling the perfect storm. There's a lot of stuff going on right now with mm -hmm. um, risk of, you know, what's going on in the economy, inflation, um, you know, uh, interest rates going up. You know, that is having an effect on like our buyers lenders, right? Mm -hmm. Our buyers lenders are saying, oh, my goodness, like, you know, maybe we don't want to lend as much into the industry. We want to see what's going on. Um, we're also seeing because interest rates are going up, the cost to, to funding costs are going up. Mm -hmm. 
Um, then on another note, we're seeing some collection rates coming down. So it's like, you know, and volumes of originations going up. So you're almost seeing the perfect storm. There's so much paper on the industry. So, so for buyers, it's a buyer's market. They can kind of come in and they, they see what, what's there and they can make, they can be selective, mm-hmm. right? Um, for our sellers, it's been a little bit different because they just came off of COVID where mm-hmm. there was no volume in the market and it was, you know, pricing was through the roof and, you know, it was a very competitive market, um, for deals. So it's for them been just a huge change. And so we've been trying to, you know, help sellers, um, to make sure that they're maximizing, you know, recoveries on their debt, um, making sure that we have good partners and, you know, for coverage for them so Mm -hmm. that for whatever reasons coming up with a buyer, um, that we have backup for them to, um, to make sure that they can, that they're selling and and they're getting the the most money for what. That they don't end up having inventory waiting to to transact and losing value, right? Because you're, you're losing so much more value in those early days when you're not collecting on them. Um, You know, there was a lot of different things that you just said. We'll try and unpack a, a, a couple of them. One of them specifically was the cost of capital. And I'm curious as to how this has been, uh, had an effect on the debt buying marketplace, you know, where, where you have these specialty lenders or bank syndications or other financial instruments that are being used to bring the cash together in order to purchase portfolios, the rise in interest rates, right, shrinks margins. And so it's been interesting to see, and I know over the last, call it six to 12 months, I've seen kind of a consolidation of some of those lending operations and seen some different changes within the specialty lending marketplace itself and how that capital is funded. Because if you thought VC capital was expensive in 2020, I can only imagine what we're looking at now for in 2023. Yeah. And so, you know, we've been hearing it from all the buyers, um, small, medium, large, it doesn't matter, right? It's affecting everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, if interest rates are going to go up, the cost for them to uh, borrow is going to go up. Um, And so that's, we're seeing in pricing, right? So that's like a direct impact on on pricing. And and a lot of the, um, you know, we get a lot of feedback when we put bids out and, you know, we ask for feedback on, you know, why was your price this here and last year and and where it is now? And one of the main drivers is the cost of funding. Um, So we've definitely seen a, a big impact from that. I would think collectability would also be affected by the rise in interest rates because where where you previously had opportunities for consumers to refinance a home or take out a, a consolidation loan or whatever, those things are now happening at a higher interest rate, which means payments are up. Right. And so what everybody's been spending on a monthly basis, and then if you want to stack on student loans and the potential of those uh, expenses uh, being reinstated for consumers, feels like there's a lot of things happening simultaneously. Now, as we've looked at the the through the years, as we've looked at the uh, economic cycles that our industry has gone through, there always seems to be a balance between the collectability of accounts and the price in which portfolios sell. Are you still seeing that same relationship between those two factors? We are. We're seeing it. I mean, obviously, you know, collection rates have been down. Mm -hmm. um, And so that is playing also into pricing. Um, You know, and we 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 still don't know what the next, let's say, six to 12 months are going to look like. Mm -hmm. Right. And and so we don't know, you know, is this have we hit rock bottom? Right. Is this where it's going to be and stabilize? Right. Or will it um, further degrade? We just don't know yet, right? And sure. and it's kind of hard to tell. Um, and so, you know, obviously what we're doing for our sellers is saying, okay, let's look at what you would make in different ways, right? Like mm-hmm. whether you place with an agency or you sell or you collect it on yourself and we make sure that it's making sense to sell for them, right? Like, sure. so uh, based on what we're seeing in the market in terms of debtors' reactions and, and payment um, response. so. Well, you know, I think we're we're always kind of um, 
dealing with that same kind of a scenario and, and trying to understand that inverse relationship of, of in terms of kind of that prediction of the future. I think it was interesting this year at RMAI, the keynote speaker came from TransUnion and was talking a little bit about some of the economic indicators that they're seeing as a credit bureau, right, in trying to predict what's going on with consumer spending, delinquencies, et cetera. Um, and I know it, and I forget what the date was that they published it this year, but in 2023, they did a research uh, survey with Forrester Research, which is you know a rather reputable group when it comes to those types of, um, of projects. And TransUnion released a report that you can download from their website that actually has some of these really cool indicators because we've been seeing a rise in the delinquencies and auto loans and credit cards and other things. And where does it end? And how is, you know, what kind of impacts are we going to see? Because we're not dealing with the same kind of overnight dramatic shift that we saw in 2008. This seems to be more of a gradual rise, but you can see some of the same economic indicators that were seen in 2006, right? As yeah. bubbles grow, you could kind of see some of those indicators uh, repeating themselves again in the 2023 timeline. Now, I'm not sitting here with a crystal ball like I'm going to be able to predict the future, uh, but I think pulling some of that information together and reviewing it in that format has been helpful for me, at least in the way that I've chosen to deploy capital over the last uh, no, about six months. Ab absolutely. And we see our sellers, our sellers are like their teams are trying to be proactive and changing mm -hmm. their policies up front and tightening who they originate to, right? We are right. seeing that. So, you know, even though we are seeing more and more volume, mm -hmm. it's you know, more of a point of them, you know, sourcing different ways, not by opening the floodgates. And so that's a good thing, right? I mean, that's been a, a good thing. We're not seeing the quality of the files um, degrade. We're seeing just the um, impacts from the economic environment. Right. Well, and, so. and hopefully, right, like that inverse relationship between price and collectability will maintain. And I think as long as those two things stay in check, right, there yeah. there's always light at the end of the tunnel as long as those two things still speak to each other um, in that direct relationship. Exactly. And we listen, we have, there are the US and Canadian markets, there are um, wonderful buying partners out there who have been around for many, many years, and they're trying to find their sweet spots and what what's working. They're yeah. working with their sellers who, in many cases, they've been, have they've had relationships for years and years. And yeah. it's just, you know, it's, it's all a cycle. So we're going through this part of the cycle, right? You know, and, and, and that's how we talk about it. Because that's, it's, you know, we, we've seen it, right? You know, we saw it where a lot of the sellers stopped selling, they started placing, and then they started selling again. And you, you mm -hmm. see this cycle of, 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 of things over the years. And so we're just in kind of a different cycle at, at the moment. Yeah, you know, it's always been interesting. And I, I always go back to the, um, I, I wasn't around the industry in the Bill Bartman days, but I always go back to kind of the, the changes and shifts in the strategies that creditors used during that time period, because there was one group that was willing to spend so much more for a debt purchase. All of the accounts started shifting to one organization, but to the point to where creditors started disassembling their litigation and their collection networks. So when that all came crashing down, they event, they had to to go and and basically rebuild those other channels quite quickly and it sounds like you guys are helping organizations to manage the three channels or at least to find the right partners to manage those channels for going forward but in the current economic environment and with the uncertainty ahead what kind of advice are you providing to creditors in preparation of 2024 yeah, so for us <clears throat> right now, we are saying, let's get you as many partners and relationships as we can, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not always the same reason why a buyer maybe isn't, you know, can't buy as much one month or another. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we want them to have coverage. And so for us right now, it's making sure that all of our sellers have a very uh, comprehensive buyer network. Mm -hmm. Different, you know, different size buyers, different, uh, different collection strategies. You know, some may lean more toward legal. Some, you know, may be passive and just no legal. We want them to have a good um, network of partners so that, you know, if, if something happens in one way, we can, we have someone to cover them. And so that's really what we've been doing. Um, you know, we've been trying to maintain long time, long term relationships. And that's really what Sam's about in general. You know, now, you know, yes, we can, we're going out and finding new relationships, but we're trying to maintain the existing ones that we have, right? Mm -hmm. The ones that that paper very well. 
we're trying really hard to, to um, you know, make sure that those relationships keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, we're, and we're trying to provide analytics. So anything that we can provide to the sellers in terms of, you know, what should that price point be right now? Mm-hmm. You know, is this in line with what we're seeing in other deals in the industry? Um, you know, and trying to give them as much information to use to, to make their decisions on whether or not it's the right time to sell. Interesting. Now, from on the flip side of that equation, from the buyer's perspective, what kind of advice are you giving the debt buyers today in preparation of 2024? Yeah, I mean, right now for debt buyers, they're they're in the, they're sitting in a good spot, right? So if they're um, well funded, <laughs> yes, if they're well funded, and I mean, they really it's it's you know find the right deals, the ones that are right for you, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, and I think that's what a lot of them are doing. A lot of the feedback we're getting sometimes when they pass on an opportunity is just, you know, something else came along during this two weeks that I think is a better fit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's also really keep the relationships you have, like try to, because, you know, those, that's the paper, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, you want to try to, even if you have to limit how much you're buying from these, these sellers, you want to keep the relationship going, mm-hmm. right? Because as that cycle changes, you want to still be in there um, because it'll be harder to get back in. Um, So that's kind of the advice we've been given to to the buyers that we work with. Sure. When all the buyers are trying to rush back into the marketplace, because like we talk about the economy in cycles, it will cycle back again. Right. Like and we'll go through this yet one more time, whether or not we will still be in the industry at that point in time. (laughs) Hopefully we will have retired. Um, (laughs) Right. right? Like it is. uh, I, I feel like that. We learned so much from the 2007, 2008 cycle and how that changed. And again, as things started to change in the 2012 to 14 range, I feel like we have seen a couple of ebbs and flows in volume through the last, call it 20 years in the space. Um, and I think it's been very interesting to to watch this same group of people and how they react. But I think if you look at the debt buying industry with a, a macroeconomic lens, uh, pretty much all of the same things tend to be true uh, as they are in other parts of the economy, because we may be a, a small fraction of a credit based economy, but everything that we do affects the rest of the economy and the rest of the economy affects us. Yeah. And this is, I mean, I'm sure this is happening all across industries. Mm. You know, this just happens to be our industry. Right. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, you know, I mean, every, every company you talk to, nobody's surprised, right. Mm. And everyone's like, yeah, I kind of figured that, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it's definitely no surprise with what's been, you know, going on in, in, uh, in the environment right now. So it's, uh, um, but it is it is just finding the right ways and um, making sure you're covered and, you know, making sure that you are proactively um, looking ahead to uh, so that you're not caught in a lurch. And that's kind of what Sam's been trying to do for our clients. Well, it sounds like you guys are on the right path and have learned from the previous cycles and are looking at how to leverage that into the future. Lauren, I really want to thank you for coming on and having a chat with me. I've been trying to get you to come on here and talk with me on the podcast for so long. I'm so excited. We finally got a chance to do it because you've been just such a great friend through the years, and I really appreciate you. Likewise, and thank you for having me and uh, look forward to doing it again. Absolutely. For those of you that are watching, if you have additional questions you'd like to ask Lauren and myself, you can leave those in the comments below. If you have additional topics you'd like to see us talk about, you can leave those in the comments as well. Hopefully, I can get Lauren to come back on here and help me creating great content for a great industry. Um, But until next time, Lauren, thank you so much for coming on. I really do appreciate you, and we'll talk to you all again soon. Thank you.